Hey everybody, this is Tasha with Prep Ford and my wonderful co-host Miss Mouse Toes. Today she is Miss Wash Your Hands. Yes. <laughs> well, it's going to take a minute for YouTube to get out the notifications, if at all, or people to see that we're live because it's that's just been messed up. So we can just chit chat for a minute. Hey, Miss Sandra. There's Good beautiful you, girl. Sandra. Gosh, I, I just adore her. You see her name and you go. Ah, oh, okay. We'll I know. <laughs> yes. A, a sane, rational person in the house here. <laughs> yes. Common hey, sense. Trish. She knows how to can. Hey, Trish. And I put in the top that said, wash your hands before coming in the side chat. Dang it. You touch your mouse and stuff. Okay. Yes, and right. tonight's I song it. Was, yeah, good. And tonight's song was Sweet Caroline. And I found a really <laughs> cute video where guys are in an airplane coming back from Iraq, a commercial air. And when they find out that their um, stewardess's name is Caroline, one of them plays it on his phone and they all start singing to her. And she's, you can tell she's mortified at first and then she starts jamming out. <laughs> <laughs> Heck can't, yeah. can't get the safety briefing. They got to sing to me first. I thought that was cute. Hey, Suburban Hillbilly. Hey, Suburban. Yep. Good to see you. I'm trying to get to my banners here. You got banners, man? Right there. See it? I see it. I could make a banner if my life depended on it. I it's got no totally, skills. Totally cool. It's super easy in here. It really is. You click on the tab that says banners whenever you're you're doing the stream. You click on the tab that says banners and you type out a banner. Hey, Court. Get hey, out of town. Oh, the crazy has made it. Hey, Morgan. Hey, Morgan. Miss Threads. You're not Jarvis. crazy. Courtney's crazy, Morgan. <laughs> hey, Farmer Son. Good to see you. <laughs> Good to see everybody. We're going to wait just another minute or so before we start our topic because you know how the tubes is. It's not sending out the notifications right away. Stuff like you, that. Half the time you feel like you're shadow banned. You go make a comment. You know, in a in a channel somewhere, it could just be random, but they have a million, you know, there's 800 people who make comments and your comment doesn't even get a like on it. Yet the ones above and beyond got 800. And then what yeah. I have to do is I delete the comment. I have to refresh, go back, and then I can have a conversation. It's very odd. It's very odd. Huh. Yeah. That's crazy. Well, you're a crazy with mad skills, Morgan. You and Dagny. I mean making bread, smoking it in your killer smoker, and that, oh, she made a chicken broth to can and used something I had never seen, which was a pressure, wait, a pressure frying pot. And it was in, that was a beautiful broth. I love when broth is beautiful in the jar. Uh -huh. It was uh -huh. gorgeous. Gorgeous, know? huh? Gorgeous. gorgeous. And we just want to lick it. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I spent an hour and a half last night chopping uh, my bell peppers I've gotten. Hey, Mario, from the last uh, seven to 12 days or so, you know, uh, well, seven to probably 10 days anyway. Um, and I, I chopped them. I had this giant bowl full of peppers. So I got six quart size baggies of chopped bell peppers out of it after they've been cleaned and everything. My peppers are starting to slow down some, though, so we'll okay, see. Good. Did you know you had a green thumb and that, did you suspect that with the way um, you and your husband amended your soil in, in your hot, windy environment of Oklahoma, that you would have this much success with that gorgeous eggplant, too? Those eggplants are magnificent. I did not think that it was going to be as productive as it was for sure um and my peppers still have quite a few babies on there and they're, or they're producing they're just not getting as big as they did at first they're like coming to the end of their cycle but still they're producing a lot and pepper is one of the biggest things you know bell pepper is one of the biggest ingredients i use in most of my cooking i love it yes. it's it adds a lot of flavor and some texture and it's just so good well i'm a Cajun or a coon ass, and if it ain't onion, celery, and bell pepper, it just ain't much worth eating. So I yeah. am the same. <laughs> yeah, I'm the same. And it's just nice to have them. I've roasted red and green peppers on the grill. You know, mm. then you peel them off, and I've actually canned them. 
right? Mm-hmm. And then, so you get like half of the bell pepper, and it's absolutely beautiful. It's probably yes, some kind of and it adds pepper. a different flavor too. Hey, Dustin, yes. Courtney's husband. Good to see you. Um, Emma. Hey, Emma, Miss Emma. <laughs> okay, so we'll get started on our topic. Um, hey, Josh. Um, so today is talking about hygiene in a shift or disaster scenario. If you look at it, um, that's one of the biggest causes of deaths in a disaster scenario. One of the largest causes is because hygiene isn't what we're normally used to. People, you know, they've, they've got a lot going on. Maybe they don't have access to clean water. Maybe they, um, they're standing water around, which, you know, attracts insects and those insect diseases and um, there's just all sorts of reasons um, but you know if you watch any show like a survival show like alone or naked and afraid or any of those if you look you notice their hands eh, so dirty so dirty it's disgusting and they're they're picking up picking up food and they're putting their food in their mouth with their hands and and they're nasty and you know a lot of them end up with diarrhea Yes. One of the biggest things they end up with because that's one of the biggest health risks during a disaster scenario situation, whatever, is diarrhea. Diarrhea kills so many people because you lose fluids way too quickly. It throws off your electrolytes in your body and your body cannot um, support that. You know, your heart and, and your organs fail and you die <laughs> or you die from dehydration, one or the other. So, you know, you've got to um, take hygiene seriously, especially in a disaster scenario, because you may not have access to a physician, probably won't, um, especially if we're talking a Tiatwaki scenario, the end of the world as we know it scenario, you know, you could you know, you're not going to have access to those common medications and those that, that health care. So you absolutely have to take your hygiene seriously during this time. And there's a lot of different aspects to that. But the biggest thing is having access to potable water, to clean water for washing your hands. Also for drinking, because if you think about it, if you're not drinking enough because you're trying to conserve water, your urine output's going to be lower, so the urine sits in your bladder and in your kidneys, and you run a higher risk of bladder infections because you're not flushing your system out as often. So then you're in a really bad situation with a bladder or kidney infection as well. So um, there's a lot of things to think about. You got any anything else to add to that part of it, Miss Mouse Toes? Like we kind of learned in 2020, like, you know, 38% of the people do not wash their hands. And when they do, they just kind of wiggle it under the faucet with a little drop of soap. If you ever watch people in a professional kitchen, they scrub their hands like a surgeon, like right? Yeah, that's yes. how we learned when we was the CNA also. Yeah. And we clean out from under our nails. And you got to go all the way around and all the way around like that. Because this is yes. the area that more people miss. Is that right there? Get your thumbs together. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And go up your arm some. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. is people, they were like, don't touch your eyes or face. Who does that? Right? Okay. I don't like be driving my car, get out, pump some gas, get in, scratch around my eye. I didn't have to learn not to touch my eyes or face. Right? If I drink out of a water bottle, even in my car, it looks discolored because I put that um, electric lights, as Vern calls it, in our electric water lights. bottle. <laughs> electric lights, yeah. And I love it tastes it. like a raspberry lemonade. Is right. I don't touch. It's why I like these flip things, uh-huh. right? The little ones that you can you flip can it. It's squirt. not. You can exactly squirt. yes. Yeah. And then when I want to close it, I just close it. But I've always been careful not to touch my face. But you have to learn how to wash your hands. Yeah, and- a lot of people I noticed, like when they go to wash their hands, okay, they turn on the water with their dirty hands. Thank you. They wash their hands thoroughly, and then they reach yes. up and grab those same nasty handles to turn yes. the water back on. Yes. It's like, okay, people, um, think about that. 
<laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but that picture got stuck in my head because I've seen yes. it so many times. Remember when they came up with the one that's what we once they came out with the handle, you know, that you could lift up from underneath right in your kitchen or your bathroom. We we keep those so you can push it up, wash your hands and then use this clean side and bap it down. But if yeah. not, it's uh, poor sanitation will kill more people. Than anything. It happens in hurricanes. See, my whole life of SHTF is hurricanes. Right. There was Maria, there was Dorian in the Caribbean, and you better have lots of little things of Neosporin. You better not be walking around in flip-flops either. Yeah. It is not fun after a hurricane here and water came in our yard or possibly under the house yeah. like Matthew, is to put on a pair of tennis shoes with thick socks, mm -hmm. okay? I mean, thick socks that really raise up your leg because as you're walking out there, there's lots of all those red ant piles floated around. Now they've just uh. sat down on the top. It's nice to look down at your dirty, it's a, it's a, I call it a yard tennis shoe, but I always get them white. And then every once in a while, you got to scrape off the green and the dirt, right? Mm -hmm. So that you can see when those fire ants are coming, but yeah. they're walking through just like in Katrina in New Orleans, through all that filthy water, any cut you have is going to get it. And my other thing is in the name of God, if you don't have 50 of these in your house, simple 3% peroxide, what is wrong with you? We disinfect our toothbrushes in it, right? If you ever have somebody who goes, every, about every month I keep getting that same three days of feeling sick, it's probably your dang toothbrush, okay? But mm. dirty hands touching your eyes and mouth and human waste, I can't even yep. hardly go there, yep. you know, but our thing is all the traveling burn did. I kept all, he always brings me back the shampoos, the conditioners, and I have all these little gallons of uh, bags, right? And this one's just soap. This is just one of soap is you've got all these little bitty bars because I think of when SHTF mm -hmm. happens, maybe you can't use the water in your house. So you're having to have some mm -hmm. buckets outside. We have a camp sink that you use a little, um, I've shown it before, but anyway, it's, it's like a manual marine pump and you just pump it and the water comes out. And we keep um, a little bar of soap hanging in there in an old like uh, thigh high stockings back in the day. And it hangs there, yeah. then the sun, right, keeps it going. And that's very nice because you're using that soap in something, then rinsing and y'all yep. know I am a freak for dish towels. The greatest invention ever are these bar towels that restaurant mm -hmm. workers are real familiar with. They're mm -hmm. thin. Like you can probably see all the holes in this. I hang these on in my shorts so that when I wash my hands at that camp sink, guess what I'm using? This to dry them. Hangs mm -hmm. right on my shorts. You know, about a quarter of it's in your pants. The other's hanging. These are so easy to sanitize, it's unbelievable. So that right. let's say we're SHTF and we don't have a whole lot of water and we're busy filtering our uh, rain barrel water. I can have a bucket with just a little bit of bleach in it, set this in it, but guess what you then need? You have got to have a clothespin to hang this up somewhere. Clothespins mm -hmm. still exist, whether wooden or not. Because mm -hmm. I need this thing to say sanitary, right? And then I hang right. it out in the sun. I'm still going to wash it, right? right? But washing hands. Yeah, and there's uh, Gardener Josh. Had four kids in neonatal ICU, and they teach you how to wash your hands for you ever oh, go in yeah. there and put that gown on. Oh, yep. yeah. So yeah. Exactly. I'm a clothespin freak, and you'll find them hanging on a tree limb somewhere, and then I gather them up after a hurricane, Right. And then I put them in a different bucket with a little bit of bleach in that water. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and those are some things to think about to have on hand, like your, your bar soap. Your, and like, like um, suburban hillbillies said, my, I believe it's suburban. Most of the, most of the, uh, when you're washing your hands, it's more about the friction getting the germs off your hands than it is the soap. Soap help makes it slicker, makes it easier uh, to move around and also damages the outside of a 
virus, like the yes. basically the smell of the virus or whatever. So it 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 uh, damages it and causes it to die. But yep. as far as bacteria goes, um, just scrubbing and rinsing thoroughly helps. You can rig up something where you have like a pour spout bucket that's rigged up with a pedal system to where you just push a pedal and it tilts that bucket enough to pour enough water out for you to wash your hands that way you're not touching yes. all of it. You know, wash your hands and you know, little water on, put your soap on, do all your scrubbing and then tilt your bucket again and rinse. Mm -hmm. Um but yes, there's a lot of different risks from poor hygiene. There's bacterial infections and fungal infections and viral infections. You know, things like uh, like uh, dengue fever, hepatitis, giardia, cholera, typhoid. Um, yes, pinworms, things like that. Um, all kinds of parasites. Um, and alert, so, excuse me, Tasha, we have an emergency. I just want all the ladies to like, don't quit rolling your shorts up, quit trying to put your boobs up, pull your shirt down. BC Truck, BC Blades is here and he's me and Tasha's. He's the channel stud. He's not to be toyed with by you. So y'all just try and unhoot yourselves. Okay. Hello, BC Truck. <laughs> Go ahead, Tasha. Sorry. Oh, no, you're good. Um, so all of these things uh, cause increase your risk of infections like from from hygiene, uh, poor hygiene practices. <laughs> I'll bet, oh, BC, yeah. I bet you could, man. Ugh. You know, some of those trucker bathrooms, that, that's really rough on some of those. Ooh. Yeah. We grew up in the time where it had that continual long dish towel. That oh, rolled through I know. It. It's like, oh my God, right? That was just horrible. <laughs> They're bad. Yeah. And then we did the world of paper towels. And for some reason, some idiots do not know how to get their paper towel in the trash. Thank you. So then yep. they were looking for another way. And they did the, the air dryer things, which now they found oh. out recycles that bathroom air and all of the germs and bacteria that's in it. And it, so yes. it sprays it right back on your hands, basically. What? Yes. You know what, Emma 32? That's why we have immune systems like a thug. I had the measles, the mumps, the chicken pox. We live, we drink out of hose pipes, as people in the South call it, when it's just a hose, right? Who knows how much algae was in that hose, right? Yes, they had blue stripes on them. They were thin like a tea towel. Uh -huh. Yes. You know, really, and we lived, but yeah, now we're much more cognizant. And in 2020, taught us nothing. It's have plenty of soap. Don't just have plenty of soap. Know how to use it. Yeah, you know what I mean. Really wash yeah. your hands. Yes. Yeah. Back and in the, the day. Oh, go ahead. Oh, back in the day when I was 14, and your dad walked you down to get your work permit, which was your social security number. You then went to the health department and they took a scraping underneath your nails to check for pinworms because your first job was always going to be being a waitress or a dishwasher somewhere. So mm -hmm. in New Orleans or Louisiana, you had to have a health card that showed you did not have pinworms. So under, I think they were, yeah, they were pinworms under your nails. So I'm like, yeah, no, we know how to wash our hands. You won't live through New Orleans if you didn't know how to wash your hands back then either. Oh, oh, that's, mm -hmm. you know, that shows you how big of a prevalent of a problem it was for them to yes. need to like do scrapings. And do you know how those pinworms eggs get under there? Like from people scratching their butts in the middle of the Your night, butt. Not, not, the butt. not watching, not washing their hands thoroughly. I mean, pinworm yes. eggs are small, I believe, and can they actually float through the air and yes. land on other surfaces too. So it could be that, but still. Ugh. Okay, Nessie, um, Hillbilly gave something we need to cross stitch. Soap don't help if it sits in the bottle, just saying. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. <laughs> and along with that, that peroxide, needing like 80 bottles of peroxide, you also need rubbing alcohol. Yes. For, for your sanitation needs and mm -hmm. lots of it or like hard liquor, which rubbing alcohol is going to be a lot cheaper than hard liquor, mm -hmm. by all means. Yep. And to get um, through it, we're going to drink that. You know, we love these little wet ones. Like I'm in South Carolina. You can't leave these in your car, okay? Because they will dry out in like an hour because it'll be, right. you know, 297 degrees in your car. Mm -hmm. So I got like a whole little pack of these 
you know, like you get 50 packs and ordered them. And then every time I come out of my car, I grab my phone, which of course has my driver's license in it. And it's just a habit for me to come up the stairs. I leave it on a little table at my front door so that when I go out of it, I pick these up. It's just automatic. And then they're always moist, but you can make your own of these with a darn bar towel or something. Yeah. Uh, sit. Remember when the 2020 first started, people said, oh, I can't find wipes. Moisten one of these down with some alcohol or a little bleach, for God's sake, and put it in a plastic bag. You Cut know, up old t-shirts that are too small or stained up that have holes yes. in it that you don't use anymore. Come on, people. We got to use some common sense. Yes. Um, and yeah, I mean, absolutely. Um, let's see. So another area is not only, you know, um, when you have not so much access to water. So water's going to be a big key. If you can have a way to store potable books, if you have a way to store potable water, then you're going to be in much better um, hygiene situation because, you know, you need just a gallon of water for each person just to drink every day, but you need more for your own personal hygiene and cleaning, you know, your surfaces and your hands and your body and stuff like that. So you need to figure how much you, the minimal amount you can get by with and maintain sanitary practices and figure out a way to store that much water. Um, because if you don't, this is all going to be for nothing. And yes. another Another thing is is um, making sure that you follow those pr proper hygiene practices, like we talked about, washing your hands. But not only that, not going to the restroom near your water source. Yes. <laughs> you know, you don't want to be using the restroom near or uphill from or your water source where that's just going to drain down into your water source. Um, mm -hmm. And since one of the most common health issues is going to be infectious diarrhea type illnesses, you know, you really don't want to have that in that yeah. area. You need to have your, your latrine area provided you can't use your indoor plumbing off way far away from your water sources um, and from your area where you're going to be, you know, doing your cooking and cleaning and storing food and things like that. And if you're in a tightly packed neighborhood, you can't help it if you are, right? That you have to live where near where you work or whatever. You mm -hmm. have to think of what are your neighbors doing? One of the things that we did uh, after I managed apartments, and if you're at the bottom of a hill, all of a sudden people would be calling in two particular apartments that raw sewage, these, there's on city sewer and water, is boiling up literally through their toilets because yeah. there was a city blockage. So one of the mm -hmm. first things we did, and I wrote this down, right? Okay, you have to find your sewer valve at the street. If you're in an older neighborhood, you can't find it. And to get a plumber to address that for you, they have to call the city. You don't have to do that. We put backflow prevention valve, right? And we could turn that off at our house in our own yard, right? Way up by yeah. our house to where a plumber could do that with no problem. Some cities started making it um, mandatory to do it, which was very smart, but I'm on a septic tank, right? Mine has to be pushed to the leach field, but we're not gonna count on that. We still have two luggable loos, you know, the toilet seat, right. the plastic bags, the shavings, Vern has his own, I've got mine. But you have to think if your neighbors are doing that, or aren't doing it, where are they dumping it? Is everybody urinating in the same spot in the grass at your fence? You know, because it'll yeah. kill the grass. And yeah. just think, how do you do that? And then more important, if you are have your luggable loo outside, you know, or we have an outdoor shower, we'll put mine in so you feel like you have some privacy. And I, again, have a bowl, right, with some water. I mean, you can't have enough of these, right? You cannot right. have enough where I've got water with a little bit of bleach in it. And then I've got my own bar towel down there or a stained dish towel and that I use to dry my hands off, you know, and it's, I'm not going to use the one tucked into my shorts that I'm using working in the garden and stuff. Right. Because they're very easy to wash and they're very fast to dry because you'd yeah. be surprised 
how many you need, but you have to have that soap. And that's where these little bitty soaps come in handy. I don't love all the soaps and the pumps, right? The pumps give out, you're touching the outside of the pump. Mm -hmm. Then you got to wipe it down. Ain't nobody got time for all that when it's 900 degrees outside either. <laughs> you know, gross um, Courtney's husband. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god no dues in the well <laughs> um yes it really does roll downhill uh there mr yes. <laughs> mr yep. vc and another thing in doing my research for tonight is something you don't think about a lot like if you have animals especially like if you live on a farm or something um or you have wild animals or you have animals that are running around and then you or your family members touch the animals that have maybe been tromping through another animal's yes. dung or a sick person's feces or something like that and then you're touching them you're petting them or they brush up against you and you push them away with your hand and then you don't immediately wash your hands you yes. touch surfaces, other people touch surfaces. Maybe you have little kids that touch them and then touch their mouths or suck on their fingers or eat food without washing their hands. All of those things you've got to consider. Um, just something as simple as making sure your animals are pinned properly so that they yes. don't spread those contaminants um, is, is a very special, uh, a, a very important thing to do, like especially. Um, in a Tiatwaki situation where it's a really long term because um, there's, you, and you also need to make sure you have like anti diarrheal medicines on because that's the number one killer, yeah. rare, uh, I believe, on health issues like illnesses is um, di diarrhea that, that causes dehydration. Um, let's see. It's why I can't cook uh, Tasha without an apron on. Yeah. I put on my yard clothes, right, which is a pair of shorts and a, and a t-shirt, usually a stained one, and I'll do a little bit of gardening. If the tide's right, I'll throw a cast net, see what's shaking out there. When I come in to cook, we don't wear shoes in our house except for house shoes, okay? Like you got your house slippers. I have house flip-flops. They're right. never going down the stairs, even for a minute is so that we don't bring whatever's in our shoes in there. We got deer poo in our yard, raccoon. I mean, there's poo. Poo happens. It's in your yard. So then I put the apron on, and that's what women wore an apron for. Remember, they didn't have a lot of clothes, and that apron protected what was ever on the outside of their shirts, whether they went out and got eggs, right, or went and threw some feed to whether it was a horse or a pig, whatever, the apron was clean and then they rinse and clean the apron, hang it out on a clothesline. I have like 11 aprons. I cannot cook without an apron so that there's nothing between my shirt and that skillet or standing at my island chopping food away. And yeah. uh, people used to make fun of me. I talk about every video after I use pork or something before I move on to another step and I get it ready to go in the skillet, I'm going to sanitize the island wherever I prepared it and my choppy block because it mm. was raw pork. Right. So it's just a habit, a life happened. But aprons can protect you. Who can change their shirts three times a day, right? Oh, I went out to the chickens, whatever. I mean, I don't have those kind of clothes I'm willing to keep changing into. I uh, typed in the external Hesperian hesperian.com um you'll have to put in the https or or just google search hesperian.com but now there's some stuff on there i don't agree with morally like they they talk about getting safe abortions and things like that i don't like that but they do have a lot of uh research and stuff from from third world countries or you know areas that have been in disasters and things like that and how to help your family in the situation they have books like where there is no doctor where there is no dentist those are great resources i do have those they do have a new updated version now on where there is no doctor that i'll be trying to get sometime in the near future but they have a lot of information over there. Some of it's just free download. Some of it they ask for a donation. But the donation is, you know, mostly whatever you can provide because they do go and help these places that, that need the help. So 
um, I would suggest people go over there and look and see what resources they have on all of this. They, they give great information as far as preventing a lot of the health issues that we've kind of discussed or touched on tonight. Uh, we are not physicians. We're not doctors. We're not giving medical advice. You need to do your own research. We're just kind of talking about as far as survival, like ways to look at it okay um but you have to do your own research on everything um but i i really like that resource there they have downloadable stuff they have physical books that you can have which i keep and uh, they nice. have pamphlets and books and articles i think over there as well so all of that you can go and do your research on them and they help to show a lot of health uh, safe health practices in situations such as disaster areas or third world countries that don't have access to public utilities. And um, so it, it's real great. And that's another thing where there is no dentist. Um, if you're not taking care of your hygiene, like your oral hygiene, ooh, you mm -hmm. can end up with some major issues pretty quick during that time. You can, you can rinse with peroxide. Remember, yeah. don't swallow it. It don't say nowhere in there to swallow it, but you uh, rinse with it. Yeah, You know, you bite your tongue, you get a little sore inside your mouth. And I just put a link to Kawana's kitchen channel of she made a great home cleaning spray with mm -hmm. vinegar and lemon juice that I like because I make my own with vinegar and citrus and teach it her kids how to clean and really wipe down a faucet. So I thought so I gave a link to that because, you know, you get tired of the same old thing and you want something new, you know. <laughs> BC thinks that coffee is kills germs. <laughs> BC oh. knows things. It does. And it keeps us from hurting people. So it, it serves a dual purpose. <laughs> it it you know? yeah, that, that saves lives. Coffee saves lives, folks. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it definitely saves my husband's life. <laughs> yes. Um, in speaking of health issues, keeping things like antidiarrheals, keeping things like the wound care items, keeping things like sterilized water, um, sterile saline um, to clean wounds with, keeping um, things like yeast infection medicines for, for women or topical uh, fungal medicines for uh, athletes' feet and other yes. areas that might be getting fungal infections. Those are all things that you need to consider for your powder, yes. 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 And these powders I, are excellent. Go ahead. Yeah. And I don't know if they still sell it, but they used to have um they used to have um a gel that you could buy that dries like a powder that for anti chafing, because like if you're doing more work than you normally would, or you're getting sweatier than you normally would areas that rub can chafe and that you can get an infection in, in the, those, those chafed areas. Uh, so some kind of barrier for that is, is a must. And Sandra was talking about, you know, how in the winter your hands get all cracked. Now, mine get cracked in the summer from crabbing and fishing. Your hands always wet out there. So, and she said, O'Keefe's lotion. And we have all seen the ads for this gold bond, remember, foot softening thing. This is the greatest thing you will ever use. It's because mm -hmm. it's full of U-R-E-A. And remember, most of our lotions do not have urea. Pee pee, mm -hmm. right? So I love, even though it's a softening foot cream, I can use it because pulling up the string on the crab pots or the rope, throwing out a cast net, I get it on those parts and this absorbs so fast, it has saved mm -hmm. me. So, and they call it shea butter, but Gold Bond's been around a million years. So yeah. I'm going to look at that yeah. O'Keefe's too as well, because you need to have, if that mm -hmm. quits working, I'm going to go with, and again, that gets to cuts, right? In SHTF, you get all these little nicks and cuts. You need to have your alcohol, your neosporin, a lot of band-aids, that yeah. sort of thing. 
Yeah. And one of the things I like is medicated body powder for like, yes. uh, hey, I'm a woman. I have these things that dangle off the front of my body. OK. And they yes. they go down and I sweat under them. And that can cause some heat rash issues, which then can lead to infection. So something mm -hmm. like Gold Bond works really well to help yes. uh, poof up under there to absorb some of that moisture to help prevent some of that heat rash and yes. prevent fungal infections and other infections. When I did a bug out um, thing on somebody's channel, what's our favorite things in our bags? And mine was the baby powder. You know, you can get these little tiny ones so mm -hmm. cheap, like CVS or Dollar Tree. And I always have them because I have a billiard table and I love the powder on my hand so I can kick people's bleep at my house and just humiliate them. Okay, never play people on their own old house and table and think you're going to whip them. Okay. It's completely <laughs> level. It's, I know my table, I know my sticks. And so when I put these, I said, you know, for women in particular and men said, Oh no, that helps us too. Like if they're really doing sweaty work, they'll wear, what do you call the thing men wear? It's not, they, they, it's not jock itch, but anyway, they wear a jock. That's it. With that, you know, like you wear and they put powder, there and it makes a huge difference because if not they get chafed and then we get raw remember and then mm -hmm. you literally have like what very op obese people get with their skin with cellulitis breaks down now that's yeah, major sure. infection yeah. time yeah you know yeah it sure is it sure Jock is that, Thank you, you, Billy. Jock sorry <laughs> oh no it's okay um powder body powder in some of those creases works well too also like even people who lose weight maybe they don't have an area that folds so much because they're bigger but if they lose weight because it's an shtf they start to lose weight because they're being more active then they start to get those skin folds and things like that from losing yes. the weight and that that can cause a lot of issues as well so having there's cotton that you can put up under to absorb moisture in those cracks um antibiotic ointment is great to keep on that area to help uh, kill the bacteria and to keep it from getting out of hand um, yes and of course keeping those wounds clean and those breakdown areas clean is going to help them heal much faster and less likely to get in a worse situation with it and if they get jock itch it can be debilitating they can spread down to their knees you know what I mean? If you've ever had a frozen shoulder, okay, you can actually, if your shoulder is frozen and it, you know, you can't get in there to get, um, say, deodorant in and it gets warm, women will, men can too. They can get a fungal infection and it is so difficult. You know, you could use those three in one creams, that sort of thing, but you can get a prescription from your doctor, which I got just for grins because my doctor's a prepper. And I said, imagine if I ever get that. And he said, yeah. And then you can use one of those long Q-tips and slide it in there because it is so painful. Because then when people start getting their um, shoulder released, it is so painful under there. It's incredibly painful. And the only way you can get rid of it is to prop your arm up and let mm -hmm. some air hit it like a kid in the NICU with bad diaper mm -hmm. rash. You'll yeah. You'll look in the camera and just their little butt sticking out. You know, they're on their um, squirted up. They squirrel them up with their little knees under them to get it mm -hmm. air. And so mm -hmm. all those happen. And then think about it. You're sweating like a hoe in church out there and mm -hmm. doing things you hadn't done before. It's why you need socks on and you need a whole lot of socks. Okay. Lots of socks, socks and the barriers like blister covers and things like that or moleskin some things Love like that skin. because you know if you get an infection in one of your feet that could be a, a a life ender really i mean if you can't be on the move if you need to be on the move or acquire the things that you need to acquire because you can't walk <laughs> um, yes that that can be an issue people um plus you're also holding other people back that maybe yes. if you're traveling or something um you can be holding other people back or they're having to carry you which is slowing mm -hmm. them down um all of those things you've got to keep in Remember, mind trench foot in vietnam mm -hmm. i mean it was debilitating for so yeah. many you know because yeah. i keep no more wool socks like they had in korea so mm -hmm. yeah people have to keep all of their body parts but especially their feet uh, warm and dry 
and you know clean clean because you run into all kind of especially fungal infections on the feet area and then also as far as women's hy hygiene goes hey Teresa loves pims good to see you yep corn pads Caitlin right whatever you have but you got to have them in abundance and remember athletes foot will spread through your whole crew oh yeah yeah and just think if they're touching their feet because their feet are hurting and they're touching their feet and then they touch surfaces you can actually get that in your hands or in your mouth and stuff like that too so yeah cleanliness is is number one and especially if you don't have access to to um, a physician hey Stuart. um another thing is sorry fellas i know you're out there but i know most of you have had women in your lives and know yep. that feminine uh hygiene is important especially um for women who are still menstruating uh girls and women who are menstruating they are um you know they have new challenges to deal with if the if the if it goes down and they don't have resources like uh if they haven't stocked feminine products to help with their menstruation uh things like that then they're gonna have to figure out some alternatives like cut up t-shirts and wadded or you can buy reusable ones that you have to wash you just sanitize them like you would anything else you know that's where that peroxide helps come in handy or bleach comes in handy yes. but if you do use bleach use it sparingly and rinse thoroughly to make sure you get all of that uh out because you know ladies vaginal area is very very tender and it's very prone to issues with chemicals and other things uh, chlor uh chlorine is also very drying and that area needs to have a certain amount of natural moisture to it so um you need to think about all those things and um, some women prefer something that's called a diva cup, which it actually inserts inside of a woman to help catch their menstrual uh, flow. But a lot of people think that's nasty and could never do that. Understandable. But you need to stock alternatives, whatever that may be. You need to look up alternatives and stock those for that area. Yeast infection medicine. A&D ointment is great for like people that have uh, diarrhea or um, maybe they're having some issues. Um, uh, it's a great barrier cream. And I saw, um, Morgan talk about, uh, zinc oxide also very great, uh, barrier cream as well. So those are all things, um, uh, to consider to have stocked and on hand, but eventually depending on how bad the situation might be, you may run out. So you have to figure out alternatives that are reusable. Dustin, I think that's Courtney's husband's name. He said, because uh -huh. he was sweating with the sling after the shoulder uh -huh. surgery, use jock itch spray. I didn't think about the spray that yeah. you get in the can. That is brilliant. Yep, yep sure can. Goodness, I'm running out of water. I got to refill. I've been parched like but, for two days. I could die a bit. Oh, I, I, I went out. <laughs> it's like 100 degrees outside and I had to go out earlier than normal to water my garden and harvest and everything today because of the um you know i was doing this live stream and i was afraid it'd get dark before i was able to get out there by the way after my live stream i believe wide family farm courtney goes live um 30 minutes after i go off yeah. the air so so anybody that wants to go over the, there head that way um afterwards if somebody one of my um people have the link to put in there that'd be great i'd appreciate it um i forgot to mention it last week and the week before because you know i have this brain fog issue so. and kaylin remember hemorrhoidal creams and ointments and that's funny when i was up uh, in spain a lot of you know cats can get an issue um with their little buttholes right and hit they can use hemorrhoidal cream so i had to go to the little pharmacy everything's a little kiosk and I have to, I can't see what I want because they hide those unmentionable things, right? So I had to draw a picture out what it was. And they're like, oh, pobre, pobre, you know, oh, they're so sorry for me. And I had to explain and draw a cat. It's for cats because you can put it on cats. You know, they'll come to you and then they would come like for three days because it gave them such relief. And they didn't understand because nobody takes their animals to the vet there because there's just not the money. You know what I mean? 
And so I'm out there and I'm noticing cats. And then I had people start knocking on the door and show me their cat's butt. Oh, it was just, I'd have to put on a glove and put it on. And I'm like, bring them by every day. But hemorrhoidal cream is a great idea. Very good. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Get a little bitty sore because cat, you know, you have to express that anal gland sometimes and they don't know how or they don't do it or don't take them to the vet. Mm -hmm. And then cats get it. But my vet taught me that. I was like, seriously? So going to the pharmacy, they're all thinking I had hemorrhoids. And then like two weeks later, I went to get a pregnancy test for a British friend who was too embarrassed to go. So they're thinking she's got hemorrhoids and she's pregnant. And I just <laughs> thought, God, my, rep my reputation's gone to hell here. <laughs> Explain it. I'm not embarrassed. It's funny uh, that the word for pregnant is embarrassed, like embarrassed. And I thought, yes, yeah, <laughs> that's impossible. So. That is funny. That is hilarious. You know, Gil stole my idea. No, I'm just kidding. Um, what Gil do? Gil, you know, um, when I saw his live stream last night, I was over there for a little while. Hey, Kathleen. I was over there and saw he did a situational awareness for kids, which is awesome. And that's actually what I was going to bring up this week. So he did it for me. So you guys um, check out Gil. Um, he did it on Gray Man Prepping Channel. G-R-A-Y, separate word, man, and then separate word, prepping channel um, mm -hmm. on kids situational awareness very great tips in there um it was excellent yes and and it is really important and we need to be honest with our kids and especially since there, i know this is not doing with our subject but i don't care saving kids lives is more important than staying on subject right here but uh may thank you um uh, make sure you check that out because you know kids kids need to know what's going on in the world with the uh, increase in children being snatched up. Uh, you you got to make them aware. You don't want them living in fear, but you need to teach them that they can fight, that they can break stuff if they need to break stuff, how to keep, how to not be a victim. Because one of the things that he talked about, and I talked about with my granddaughter's friend that came over, because um, she's several years older, was things um, was things like uh, paying attention to um, paying attention to your surroundings, but also not appearing. Most most of them go after kids who are not confident. Like they're yes. they they hold their their they don't have good self esteem, so they hold their body language differently. A lot of kids, if they're if they're up and they're looking around and they, you know, they've got some fight in them and they've got some spunk and they've got some confidence, they're not as likely to go for them. I'm not mm -hmm. saying all of them won't be a victim, but I'm saying that the the trend is and the the facts show that they go towards more kids that carry themselves more like this, introverted. You made a great point where they need to be getting those earphones out of their ears and yes. listening and paying attention to what's going on around them. They mm -hmm. can't hear somebody coming up on them if they've got music blaring in their ears. Yep. Remember in New York for a while that was the knockout game and they'd come running up behind people and punch them. How do you not hear footsteps behind you? And when we've done situel aware, situational awareness things, you know, I pop off because mm -hmm. you do not want to get beat up and have that issue. Just like the thing with the governor of New York. I mean, I was taught really young. If you're ever in the kitchen, you know, as a waitress and the boss does it, you yell no or fire and you scratch them, right? Mm -hmm. The women who won't say anything because I wanted to keep my job. I'd be walking out of there and he'd have one hell of a scratch down his mm -hmm. face, right? Mm -hmm. Or ripped up. If my story was he came up behind me and grabbed my chest, I would reach over him and scratch through his hairline. There would be proof that he got close enough to me to touch me. But just mm -hmm. like in the Me Too movement, oh, I didn't want to say anything to the director because he would have affected my career. Uh I got a problem with that, okay? Because if yeah. I went home and told Vern, okay, I had to scratch Cuomo's face and he fired me, and he would say something to me like, well, we really need the money, I would then punch him, okay, yeah. or hit him with a skillet because 
you ain't going to hold me out, bro. And of course he never would. What he would do is get in the car and then go finish the guy off. Right. But, and kids need to know that that's okay too is, but I hate that stranger danger because a policeman would be a stranger, right? Or everybody's not bad, but when a kid doesn't like somebody, believe them. But when you, t I always teach kid, follow me, right? Like I can walk down the sidewalk. They're like ducks. I turn around, they turn around because they had those three little grandsons and you think wrangling those three little cats wasn't easy. I better turn around and you better be there. I'm back here. I'm back here. That's what I hear. Right. Mm -hmm. Is because you cannot keep them safe. If not, I'd walked up to people and said, I don't know what your problem is, but I see your eye in that little one. And that is not the one for you, bruh. So you need mm -hmm. to find another aisle. Okay, because I'll I'll just confront you. It's like when you think somebody's following you, turn around and say, got a problem? I got something you want? Whoa, they're going to cross the street. That's what you want, right? Because you mm -hmm. could just say what they were wearing. And I liked how on Gills, they talked about the games we play. I spy with my little eye. Mm -hmm. Somebody find me a kitty cat or a lady with a ponytail. Because there was the sunbeam girl, member with a ponytail. And tell me where it is and what color were her pants? yellow so that taught you when you said there was a weird man in a car following me what kind of car was it it was a car like uncle franklin's what color mm -hmm. was it it's red he had, what color was his shirt blue you learn to remember those and then yeah. you'd say did i do good so when your dad told the cop or went looking for him they knew what they were looking for and could tell right. the neighbors right so and you can still make them educational without scaring kids you know yeah. Yeah. And another thing is teaching kids that just because somebody looks nice doesn't mean they are. Um, no. That's a big one. Just because they look nice or just because they look like a grandma or a grandpa doesn't mean they're good people. That's right. Um, so, and you got to pay attention to the things like the dude who's paying extra attention to the kids like he's more interested in what the kids are doing than what the what the grown-ups are talking about yes. like he's more interested in all of that but uh <laughs> that's funny Courtney. well as it should be that's you you have to be able to do that i had a brother who was six five and i remember saying to a guy okay I need to use the phone so I can call my dad. Well, you're not going to use the phone. Oh, you're going to be really sorry if you don't let me use that phone. Do you know who my brother is? And then, of course, I get to use the phone. And my brother stomped him down the next day at school. Gets suspended. Dad's got to go and tell him. That's what he did. He almost blocked her from calling, right? So it's like it just is what it is. And sometimes somebody got to know she got some manly backup, right? Back in the day, we didn't pull out a knife on each other or shoot each other. Right. But you had to let somebody know. Right. So they just won't mess with you again. They don't have yeah. to go curse them out or get loud. Right. But when your brother walks in and says, I need to talk to the manager and my uh, sister's coworker now and then just sit across from a booth and have that. Those people won't even look at you again. Yeah. Right. They won't mess with anybody else in there. But sometimes you need to bring in the hammer. Right. Because we can talk tough and we can be situationally aware but if they continue to do it, then we absolutely need a hammer to come in. Yeah. But I'm yep. telling you, I at work, I was always taught you scratch them, you leave a mark on them and then you yep. have some. Proof. But I get yep. so tired. I didn't want to lose my job. Oh, I'll need you in the nuts so hard, brother. You'll need a proctologist and an ear, nose and throat to get them to drop back down. OK, <laughs> because you're going down because when you go down, I can run. Right. I'm going to knock you down and run. And then I'm going to send Vern back in the day, my brother and my dad, my uncles to finish you off. But you're going to drop. And don't be afraid of hurting people's feelings or testicles. They got two. OK, right. I mean, don't well, act stupid. Nobody will pull on them. Well, and the thing is, like I've always taught Chelsea, like kids are real worried about breaking something like in a store or somewhere in public. And that's the one time it's okay to knock stuff down. I don't care how expensive those vases are on the shelf or whatever it is. You, if, especially if they go around from behind and they grab, they grab them by the mouth where yes. they can't scream. They have to draw attention. However they can, if that means kicking stuff off the shelf and breaking it, uh, 
biting the heck out of them, this is the time to fight. Scratch, go yeah. for the eyes, go for the throat, you know, kick in the throat or punch in the throat. Um, dropping their weight completely. Have you ever tried to carry a kid? I don't care how little they are that just drops their whole weight back like this. Yes. It, yeah, it's hard. If you're upright, it's easier for them to grab. But if you just drop all your weight back like that, mm -hmm. it it'll pull them down with you a lot of times twist and yes. pull yes um those are all things and another thing i saw a long time ago when i still watched oprah okay back in the in the beginning before she went complete completely cuckoo um yes. hey tiger 454 one of the things that um they had an expert on there and one of their tips was especially if a child gets shoved into the trunk of a vehicle oh Feel around for wires, pull wires out, um, kick the tail light out if you can, and reach your hand out and wave your hand so that somebody um, that's driving behind you can see you. But the best advice is to not ever get put in that vehicle in the first place. And, but yes. you know, if you do get put in there, you have to try to look for ways to get a signal to get uh, somebody's attention before they take you somewhere where nobody's around. Yes. Oh, and I hear you, Morgan, on what you're saying, right? We can be, we can learn all the maneuvers to get a half Nelson, a full, a full Nelson, but we go back to the basic biology, right? The difference between a man and a woman. I could punch Vern. These could be like, bro, why'd you punch me? That kind of hurt. Vern punches me in the face with yeah. not even all his strength. He's going to crush every bone in my face. Mm -hmm. So we know the biological differences. Mm -hmm. But when a woman's attacked, if you will yell fire, fire, everybody comes to look at a fire. Don't yell for help. People will close their blinds, right? But I like that of make kids not be afraid to break things. You have to make noise. You have to do anything you can but just don't be afraid to. And women got to learn how to leave a mark on somebody. If yep. I'm going to be able to tell the police that guy grabbed me from behind and you've got my scratch marks up the back of his head, what did that just support? My theory that he grabbed me from behind or reached around his neck mm. and scratched. Back in the day, we didn't mm. have DNA, right? But it's what my dad used to say. Whoever does something to you better have a mark on them. Okay? Because yep. number one, that's going to how I find them. And I'm going to know that you weren't paralyzed. Right. Yeah. And it'll match your story. And, Women too often were not believed. Yeah. And if you are DNA, your DNA in as many places as you can. Like if they throw you in a vehicle, you touch every surface inside there that you yes. possibly can. You spit in there. Whatever you've got to yes. do to get your DNA in there to let them know. I know one of the forensic files that I watched, this girl had the presence of mind when she asked to go to the bathroom at this man's house after he repeatedly assaulted her sexually. Mm -hmm. She goes into the bathroom and she literally touches, she, and she made mental notes of everything she touched and stuff so nice. that they could find that, find that stuff in, in his place, all of her DNA in that place and her fingerprints. So yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's one big thing. I know we got off subject, but that is a really great video with incredible tips and tricks to help your kids with their uh, situational awareness without yes. scaring them. So definitely check was, out. I'm pretty sure it was Courtney's husband, Dustin, who pointed out, and after you grab them in the junk or whatever you got to do, wash your hands. See, he can stay focused. <laughs> on there you go. I wash your hands. And like Mouse Toast says, wash your hands before you come in here. People. Yes. You've been touching Touch your mouse your and mouth. stuff. Been diddling your little mouse and things, typing on your keyboard, and every once in a while, you know, disinfect that. And don't pick your nose ever, okay, without a tissue. That's just come on, sort of mouse. Nice come on, mouse. Yeah. This is fun. <laughs> Go to oh, God. Yeah. Mm. And women can never feel bad when they are overpowered, right? You just, you do the best you can. But in the thing with, I do like that Cuomo's going down. I do know it's just a distraction. Okay, we're going to distract from this big two trillion, in, not infrastructure thing that's going to further destroy us. And look at this shiny object. But I like that they're eating their own. Mm -hmm. And then women are now coming out and saying more, never be afraid in the workplace because God will open something else up for you.
okay? Because none of us were put here um, to be violent. I love Teresa has a keyboard condom. It's a rubber cover that goes over the keyboard. Yeah, those are excellent. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's yep. awesome. That's awesome. Speaking yeah. of condoms, that they, you know, depending on what your religious beliefs are on birth control, but that that is a really good item to have in a shift scenario because you don't want to be creating more babies in a shift scenario. Okay, people. <laughs> if you want and the if, zombies to find, you have somebody squatting at a tree kind of to deliver one. Yeah, no. Or a baby screaming in the middle of the night. Okay. Not saying get rid of the ones you got, but I'm just saying you want to try yes. to prevent that if you can. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, safe typing. <laughs> Courtney, right please. Right my home. Grab the yes. junk and play lawnmower. <laughs> <laughs> safe, Don't be afraid. Safe typing. That's right. It also That's shows how close somebody got to you for you to do that. Like if you're yeah. saying, you know, I told them you need to back up. You're getting too close to me. Mm -hmm. If you're close enough that I can knee you in the nuts, you are closer to me than my husband is when we have a conversation, just a conversation. Mm -hmm. So then it's like, you know, and never be afraid to put your hand on a man's chest, back up, bro, back up too close. You know, just yeah. never you just have to responsible typing. Yes. And you Be can drink really in keyboard. Okay. Just don't spill your 40. Okay. Your cold 40 on your keyboard or it tends to That's shut right. it out. Okay. That's right. You see Trump can't undo his knees now. They're stuck together. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, mm-mm. Mm -mm. Yeah. Anytime he sees mouse, that's what's going to be coming in his head yeah. from now on. He's just like an automatic. It's an automatic reaction. Just knees together and close everything yeah. off. To where and I think in those few, few minutes we talked about it, Dustin has forgotten about his shoulder pain completely. Right? <laughs> so. See, Dustin. <laughs> There's one positive thing about coming to our chats. You at least yes. get one kind of pain while we're discussing another at some point. Yeah. This is painful enough. Everybody go get some ibuprofen and get it taken after our chat. <laughs> yes. I'm just teasing. All right. And well, you guys. Oh, go ahead. He made a woman uncomfortable. If she ever had to say back up, he would be, I cannot apologize enough. He wouldn't be like, hey, man, it's all cool. He'd be mortified. But he wouldn't yeah. do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Teresa loves Pims makes a good point, And I do this, like, especially, you know, if I'm in, in a larger area, I, I put the keys between my knuckles and, yes. and I can use that to punch, to claw or whatever, if I need to, um, as a self-defense tactic. But of course I live in a state where you can, without a permit, openly carry a pew pew. So, you know, I like that too. And I brought a visual, Tasha, because we talked about this like two chats ago, but because I have old lady oh. timers, just it's the Aquapod kit, that emergency yes. water storage. And yes. this is made in the US, not the water bob that I used to get that held right. 100 gallons because I have a big jacuzzi bathtub. Now, I like it because it has this pump on it. Now, I ain't pumping out of this to flush my toilet, people. I'm not right. putting for a big hurricane or something, you know, filling this with potable water and then right. using it. But I like this because it's made in the USA, still doesn't have that BPA. You're, I mean, it's not going to be in there a month. You know what I yeah. mean? And then, of course, you chunk them when they're done because I'm sure you could clean it out, but I don't need a big plastic wet thing flapping around. I just one and done. I mean, how many times are you going to need it? Good yeah. night, Sam. You could reuse it if you needed to, though, especially if you put yes. uh, some more water in it with, with some bleach and then yeah. let it slush it around in there and then dumped it out and made sure you air dried mm -hmm. it. But like you said, they're not too crazy expensive, and um, but it would be something really good to have on hand for sure to help yes. you with your hygiene and for, for mm -hmm. drinking and stuff like that. Yeah. So, um, all right. Well. I thank each of you so much for coming. I know we didn't go into crazy detail on the hygiene stuff, but I think we touched on a lot of points to get you to thinking so that you can start doing your research um, and getting the gears turning and getting what you need uh, as far as supplies go uh, to help in your hygiene should a shift scenario happen to you in your area. Um, so we appreciate each of you. Thank you so much for watching those that would like to go over. I don't know if uh, somebody can share Courtney wide family farms, um, 
channel link but anybody that would like to go over and and visit over there we'd love to have you over i like to go over and support her channel again it's usually about 30 minutes after i get off air so in about 26 minutes she'll go live let so, me find it. Is she, is she harvesting celery tonight? She has beautiful celery. Let me find it. Oh, she harvested celery. Oh, my gosh. Bless her heart. She said the tap yes. words were like crazy, and she's going to see about there getting a celery knife next time. So There we go. Okay. Now, right. that's just her channel. I didn't find the. That's just her channel. Little. You can go over there and see when she's live. She'll yeah. be on just a little bit. So thank you all so much for watching. I love you. God bless. And God loves you. And you guys just remember to prep for it. Prep for it all. And wash your dang hands, people. Yes. <laughs> Bye.